Today we're going to make a little script that's going to auto color our keyboard based on the mapping within a sampler. So this came up on the forum a few weeks ago. I thought we'd take a look at it. It's quite an easy thing to do, but uh, it's not so intuitive necessarily how you go about doing it. So I've got a project here and on my desktop, it's uh, this folder. And there are a couple of sample maps that I've created, one for a Bansuri, one for a trombone, just some instruments with different ranges, basically. And there's the two sets of samples. So nothing exciting. So to our project, we're going to add a sampler. And if I select one of those sample maps, you'll see there's the Bansuri range. And there's the trombone down here. There's a bit of crossover in the middle. So we'll clear that out for now. Just select new sample map. So on our interface, we're going to add a keyboard. Obviously we need a keyboard for this. So let's uh, do that now. And content type of the floating tile is keyboard when I find it. There it is, keyboard. Okay, and we're not going to style this. We're just going to leave it um, with the default appearance. But what we will change is the low key. So that's currently set to nine. We'll change that to 36 and hit F5. That's just so we can see the samples that we actually have. We can see the range. Uh, we can also change the key width as well to 12, just to fit a few more keys on that keyboard. We're also going to need a panel. So let's add a panel. And it doesn't matter where we put it, we're going to make it invisible because we don't need to see it for this. We're going to rename the keyboard. We'll call it FLT for floating tile keyboard. And we'll call the panel PNL preload. So panels have a special callback called a preload callback. And it's triggered whenever some preloading happens in highs. So when you're changing a sample map and samples are being loaded in or you unload a sample map, that's going to trigger the preload callback. So we can sort of latch onto that. And when that callback is triggered, we can then check which notes have samples mapped to them and color the keyboard accordingly. So you can also use the preloading callback to create a loading bar. So you can actually see a sort of progress indicator of how much data has been loaded into RAM. And that's quite a nice thing to do. So if you're going to do that, then you can reuse this um, panel that we've got here, the preload panel, but keep it visible and actually use that to draw your preload bar. But for the purpose of this video, which is just to color the keyboard, we can have that panel hidden. Okay, so we're going to need a reference to our preload panel. So we'll right click on that, select create script variable definition and just paste that into our script. And I'll put a comment there, PNL preload. We're also going to need to get a reference to our sampler. Now we could just right click on it and select create type sampler script reference, but we want to make this generic so it works with any number of samplers and can be dropped into any project. And you can adapt this if you don't want it to work with all your samplers, you can adapt it so it only works with one or two samplers or whatever suits you. But I'm going to demonstrate it working with all the samplers in the project. So the first thing to do is get the IDs of all of the samplers in the project. And we're going to do that using the function synth.getIDList. And we're going to pass in the word sampler. If we open the script watch table, we can see our sample IDs array, and it's got one ID in it currently, which is sampler one. If I add another sampler and recompile and reload this, we can see we've now got two sampler IDs in our array. And it doesn't matter what we call these samplers, their IDs will always be added to that array. So this function here, get ID list, is what's creating this sampler IDs array. Okay, now we're going to create another array called samplers. And then we're going to run a loop over all the different IDs. And for each ID, we're going to grab the sampler associated with it and put it into the samplers array. Ah, uh, that should be samplers with an S. So we'll do samplers.push synth.getsampler and then we pass in the ID there. And again, I've got a typo, that should be samplers. There we are. Okay, the next thing to do is to trigger our preloading callback. So first of all, we need to assign the callback to our panel. So it's going to be pnlpreload.setloadingCallback. 
and the autocomplete there has filled in the rest of it for me. So what we get is this variable called is preloading. And if we just console print that, and we'll just clear the console there. So I'm going to load a sample map and you can see it shows one and then zero. So while the sample map's being loaded, is preloading will equal one. And then once it's finished loading, it's going to switch to zero. So this callback gets triggered twice, once when we start loading and once when we finish loading. So if we switch to the other sample map, we'll see the same thing again, one and then zero. And then if I right click and select new sample map, so we're clearing out the samples, we get the same thing, one and then zero. So we want to wait until the sample map has finished loading until we check which keys have samples mapped to them. So that means we have to wait until this value is zero. So we'll say if not is preloading, or in other words, if this variable has a value of zero. And then we're going to call a function, we'll call it set key colors. And then we're going to write this function. Okay, let's uh, bring our interface back so we can see that here. So this function is going to start by going through every single key on the keyboard, so 0 to 127, and it's just going to give it a sort of default base color. So that could be white or um, dark gray or well, whatever you want as your sort of default background color for your keyboard. I'm going to go with a dark gray one. So we're just going to loop from 0 to 127. And we're going to call engine.setKeyColor. And for the key number, we're going to put i, because that's the note number. And for the color, we're going to do colors.withAlpha, so we can specify the transparency. And I'm going to do colors.black, and I'll give it an alpha value of 0.4. So nothing happens when I hit F5, and that's because we haven't triggered the preloading callback. But we can actually call this function in on in it as well, just so it triggers when the instrument first opens, so even when no samples are loaded. So if I hit F5, there we go. So that's our sort of default background color for the keyboard. So the next thing we're going to do is again loop through all the notes from 0 to 127. And within that loop, we're then going to loop through all the different samplers in our project and see if any of them have a sample mapped to that note. So loop for i equals 0 i is less than 128, i plus plus. And now in here, we're going to loop through the samplers. So that's the samplers in our samplers array. So we'll say for s in samplers, if s dot is note number mapped, I think that's the name of the function, put i. So we're saying if the note i, so wherever we are in our loop, has a sample mapped to it in this particular sampler, so whichever sampler we're looping over, then we want to color the key. So we say engine.setKeyColor. And again, we'll put i colors.withAlpha. And I'm going to do blue here and give it an alpha of 0.2. Okay, I'll hit F5. Let's see what's going on there. Oh, that should be set key color. There we go. Okay, so again, nothing's happened yet because we haven't loaded any samples. So let's load some samples in. And we can see the keyboard updated. So what happened was we loaded the samples that triggered the preloading callback. And once the samples had finished loading, the preloading callback triggered again with zero. That called our set key colors function. That colored all the keys black, first of all, and then it went through each key and each sampler to see which notes had samples mapped to them and colored them blue if they did. So now if I change this to the trombone, we can see the range that's colored changes as well. Now we've got some overlap here, as we mentioned, the bansuri and the trombone, they sort of cross over around this point. So if in sampler two, I load up the trombone, we'll see the full key range for both of them is colored. Now, if I wanted more separation here, of course I could Grab these samples, move them up, save the sample map, and there we go. 
you can see the two separate instruments now. Okay, and that's it for this one. As you can see, it wasn't that complicated. You just have to know about using the loading callback in this way. You can adapt this, of course. You can make the colors different for different samplers, and you can do all kinds of things, really. This is to just give you the basic idea of how it works. So, as usual, I hope you found this helpful. I'll be making the snippet for this project available to my higher tier patrons. If you don't follow me on Patreon and you would like to, there is a link in the video description. I post lots of extra little things over there, code snippets, project snippets, additional videos and other bits and pieces related to highs and sample library development in general. If you've got any questions or comments, please leave them below. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time.